Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today we're going to be going over another method of replication. Last time we did animation montages, today we're going to be spawning in items or actors or anything along those lines. And the method is very similar but slightly different and I'm going to go over two different methods here today as well. So again we're going to be spawning in something which will be replicated. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make. So I have my two characters in here. I'm just going to walk over to be in front of this one and if I press right mouse button I'm going to spawn in a ball like so, so I've spawned in an actor and you can see it happened on both screens and we can push it around like that and it will be fully replicated like so. You can see we can do this as many times as we want and we can do this on both of them as well. The replication will work for both like this so they can both spawn them in, move them about, anything that you'd like. So this is what we made today, again just another replication of spawning in a ball or anything that you choose. So without further ado, let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you want is you obviously want to have your blueprint actor which you're going to spawn in. So for me that is just a blueprint actor with a sphere in here like so. And I've just named this ball. And now because this is a ball I want it to be able to move. So I've selected the sphere and I've simulated the physics like so. And then I've selected ball self up in the top left and I'm going to tick replicate movement. And so that is just going to automatically make sure that the movement is replicated so whenever it is rolling using the simulate physics that will work and be replicated for everybody playing the game. So make sure you've done that if that's what you want but if you don't want it to move you don't need to tick replicate movement. We're going to compile, save that, minimize it and now we need to open the blueprint which you want to use to spawn something in. In my example that's the third person character. So I'm going to go to third person BP, blueprints, third person character and I'm simply find some empty space in the event graph. And again, I just want to spawn this in when I press right mouse button. So I'm going to right click and get to the right mouse button. Like so, but again, you can do this wherever you want and on any action mapping you choose as well. And we're going to come back to that in a second. Because what we're going to do first is underneath this, we're going to right click and add a custom event. And I'm going to name this one spawn item on server, like so. And I'm going to change the replicates from not replicated to run on server because this is spawning the item on the server. And then underneath this I'm going to right click and add another custom event naming this one spawn item on client because this is going to spawn on the client. And I'm going to change replicate from not replicated to multicast which is going to run it everywhere. So run on all clients and servers so you can also change that to be spawn item on all instead if that makes more sense for you. And the spawn item on client is where we're going to actually spawn in the item. So I'm going to drag out of this and get spawn actor from class like so. And I'm going to drag the class onto the spawn item on client like so. And the reason I'm doing that is because then we can use the same custom event to make it dynamic to spawn in anything that we want. And you can do the same with the spawn transform as well, but I'm not going to bother because I'm going to want this to be the same for each one. Although actually just to show you I will do it. So spawn transform I'm also going to drag into there as well and add pin to node like so. So now spawn item on client is going to go into a spawn actor with the class and spawn transform coming from this custom event as you can see there. And I will go above that and the spawn item on server we're going to call function spawn item on client like so. And again I'm going to drag these in so class we're going to add pin to node spawn transform there as well. So they're going through there and I'll go over all this again in a second and go back up to right mouse button or wherever you want this to spawn. Pressed is going to be call function spawn item on server like so. And now this is where we're going to actually set up what we want to spawn and where we want to spawn it. So I'm going to give myself some nice room like this. So again, this can be somewhere else if you want. This could be in a function so you can set this up however you like. Maybe you equip something, for example, a book which allows you to place different things down, kind of like the forest did, or it's in your inventory, or anything along those lines. But again, just call the custom event of spawn item on server when you want to spawn something in, so you can set the class and the spawn transform as well. But for me, in this example, the class is going to simply just be my ball actor, as you can see there, and the spawn transform. And the spawn transform, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make transform like that. The location is just going to simply be directly in front of the player. So to do that, I'm going to right click and get the actor location, like so. Underneath this, I'm going to right click and get the actor rotation. And the reason I've got the rotation is so I can get the forward vector. 
So the return value of the rotation, I'm going to get forward vector. Return value of that, I'm going to get a vector multiplied by a float. And I'm going to multiply this by 5. So it's going to spawn 5 units in front of me, maybe even 10. And then return value of the get actor location, it's going to go into a vector plus a vector. Connecting that in there like so. And then that's going to go into the location. So now that it's going to spawn the ball 10 units in front of the player. And it's going to spawn the ball like so. We compile and save, and that should be the code done for us. So like I say, what's going to do is when we press the right mouse button, it's going to call the event of spawn item on server, inputting the class as the ball and the spawn transform as 10 units in front of the player. And then it's going to go to the spawn item on server and then call the spawn item on client, which is now also running on the server because we've done this here. It's going to run on the server. Again, transferring over the class and spawn transform. And then it'll go to the client and run this on all the clients and just all systems connected. And again, can input the class and transform into the actual spawn actor. So this is where it's going to actually happen. So I'm going to compile, save, and we can hit play to test this out. So what I'm going to do is again, just move these over. And then if I go in front of this and I click the right mouse button, it's going to spawn in the ball, replicate it on both ones, and we can move it like so. And again, this will work for both of them like this. This does work perfectly for how we want. And what I'm also going to do is show you another method now. So what we can do is the right mouse button we can just put straight into a spawn actor. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this and disconnect that there. Get a spawn actor up here and then connect in the right things. So when we press the right mouse button it's just going to spawn it in. Now ordinarily what this would do is it would just only work for the player or for the character which has tried to spawn it in. However what we can do is once you've got that as we see there like so compile we should see that's working perfectly we I mean, go over to the ball untick replicates movement and just tick replicates and now we'll do this all automatically for us so if we hit play we can right click and it's going to do it for us like so let me again get the big screen up like this as you can see it's doing this all automatically for us so you might wonder what was the point in doing it the other way for the first time what's the point in doing all of this other code here well really the thing is you might not want it to be replicated all the time so what this will do is it will just constantly be replicated. You might not want that, for example, if you might only want one player to be able to see it, or in certain cases, you might want to change it so one player sees it, one player doesn't, or anything along those lines, really. And it's just different methods as well. So you might want to do this, you might not. This kind of gives you more freedom as well to just change it how you want to. But again, really, it's your choice to do it whichever way you want. But I thought I'd just show you both options and both ways of doing it instead, just so you have both options and you can choose which one to do. Again, this way also works perfectly fine, and that's the way that I'm going to go with, just because I prefer it. Do whichever one you choose, just make sure replicate movement is ticked. But I think that'll be it for this video. If we've done everything we want to do, we've set it up so we can spawn in an item, and it'll be replicated perfectly on both the clients and the servers, as you can see here, like so. And again, we've set it up in a dynamic system, so you can just call the same custom event to do whatever you like, and it can be reused over and over again without having to remake it each and every time. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.